right, you guys, welcome back. This time, I make beef stroganoff for dinner. So, so I'm pretty sure that most of you guys who have watched our videos and have seen the ones that I do by myself, or at least while I'm holding the camera, I've noticed I get super shaky and I'm sorry. Please bear with me. That time has come again. I'm the one doing the video all by my lonesome. <laughs> so please bear with me. I'm sorry it's not nearly as well as what Roger does. So like I said in the beginning, I am making beef stroganoff for dinner. It is one of our favorite dinners, to be honest. Um, he makes it all the time, and well, I'm slowly the one taking over cooking, because, well, it's not fair for Richard to have to cook and build and do everything else by himself. So it's my domain now, and I'm slowly learning. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm making beef stroganoff. Um, a lot of people get, like, box dinners for beef stroganoff, or the little packets that you can get at the store like this and they follow the directions on the back or the side or wherever they decide to put them and you can do that that is a viable way to do it however in both of our opinions it doesn't turn out the best so if you're making beef stroganoff don't follow a box don't follow a packet follow us Richard's dad makes amazing beef stroganoff, and for the longest time when it was just he and I living together, I wanted to make it for dinner for us. He told me no, not until I sat down and watched his dad do it and learned, then I could do it. So while we were living with his grandma, or at least staying with his grandma, that's what I did. I decided that, well, I'm going to finally watch what you're doing and figure it out for myself. So that's what I did. So after I watched his father do it a couple different times, to be honest, because with me, you have to show me, it is the simplest dinner you could possibly make. You only need a couple things. So what you need is first your meat, and we use about a pound for just the two of us. You can use more or less depending on how many people you're going to feed. All you need is a can of cream of mushroom, and you can use a small can, a big can. Like I said, it all depends on how many people you're going to be feeding. Mushrooms, and you can also put in an onion if you feel like it, and sour cream. That's all you really need. Sour cream, meat, onion if you want it, mushrooms, can of cream of mushroom. Super easy, right? Super, super easy. So, I have my mushrooms over here. I really like mushrooms, so I grabbed two things of mushrooms. Mushrooms! Aww. And so, I'm going to cut them up, and then I'll get back to you. Alright, I'm back. It does not take long to cut up mushrooms, so I did the onion at the same time. If you like onions, try it with it at least once. Unless you're allergic, then don't do it because I don't want to get you sick or have a bad reaction or anything like that. But what I'm going to do with the onions is I'm going to caramelize them and then I'm going to add everything else to it. But, so with the onions, I just did strips, you guys. I didn't make them too big, I didn't make them too small, there's no point to do that, they break down when they cook. Same with the mushrooms. Didn't do them too big, didn't do them too small, they break down when they cook. And because I love mushrooms, I have this really bad amazing habit when I make mushrooms or cut mushrooms up that I always eat mushrooms while I'm doing it. Richard's not here so I get to eat one but in my defense it fell on the ground while I was trying to get it out of the container so I'm just gonna wipe it off and eat it for myself because I love mushrooms. Don't tell him. That was a good mushroom. I like how I tell you guys don't tell him when he's the one that uploads everything so he's gonna see it and probably yell at me afterwards that's okay it's after the fact that i already ate it so i don't mind getting yelled at after i ate something delicious <laughs> so now that those are all cut let's go inside and start cooking so once again there are the onions right there and the mushrooms right there 
And the pan I'm using is our cast iron skillet. Well, Richard's cast iron skillet. But I guess I'm married to him, so it's fine too. Yay! <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of oil on the bottom. And I'm going to put the onions in and stir them around, make sure they're super coated. And then I'm going to turn them on and let them just get golden and saute them. And then you guys will be here for more. Okay, so they are evenly coated. They are in the pan. And one thing I do just want to mention is, I don't know if you guys noticed when I showed you them, but I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have all figured that out. And if you haven't, well, now you know. Um, I sat there and peeled all of my onions apart <laughs> because I don't like having to mix them with my spatula for some weird reason because not all the time do they come apart. And I want to make sure that they're evenly cooked, evenly coated, not sticking or clumping together. Most of the time onions are pretty good at not doing that, but I just wanted to make sure. So I just want to state that you don't have to do that, but I'm a weirdo. I do it. But yeah, so I'm going to have them just saute themselves on a low heat and we'll be back in a couple minutes. Okay, so it's kind of dark and I'm sorry the sun's starting to go down. They are sauteed. Funny thing about this, while they were sauteing, <laughs> I went outside and asked Richard if I should put some sauteed onions in with the meat. He says no, because if you do that, at the end it'll be a little bit more soft. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, did you already do that? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, why didn't you, or why, why did you even come ask me? I told him it's because I told you guys I wasn't gonna. Ha ha. I love you, Richard. <laughs> so, those are done. So I'm going to add the meat. There is the, there is the meat. And the meat makes the oil splat at me. So what you want to do is you want to brown it. I mean, like cook it all the way through, obviously, and brown it. But halfway through the process of you cooking your meat, you start on your rice. So once that is all done, I will start the rice and I'll let you guys catch up then. Okay, you guys, I'm back. So the meat is done. And... You guys remember how I just told you to start the rice about halfway through? Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> start it probably, to be honest, I would say about the same time you guys are doing the onions. Um, just because if you start it too late, it's not going to be done by the time that everything else is done. Unless you have that instant five minute cooking crud rice. And there's nothing wrong with that rice. I happen to like that rice a lot, but I just remembered this is not that type of rice. <laughs> so I am going to turn off the meat and let it cool down a bit and wait until my rice is just about done. And then I am going to add everything else to it and I will keep you guys posted while that is happening. However, before I want to, I want to say this now, because of the fact that I sauteed my onions and I put out oil in it, do not drain your oil. Do not drain your oil. You can drain it a little bit if you feel like it, but I wouldn't suggest it. It adds a little bit more flavor as well as just anything and everything you'd want. Like you don't need the water, like the packet or the box says. You do not need to add water. Um, the only reason why you would add water is because, well, that packet makes the soup stuff. And if you have a can of cream mushroom, like that big one right there that I have, then you don't need the packet. And we do condensed soup because it's better tasting to us. It's not nearly as watery at all. So, I mean, it's just, it's better in our opinions. So that's what we use. So I'm going to turn that meat off and I'm gonna let it cool down and I'm gonna keep mixing it, making sure that it doesn't all stick. And I'm gonna wait until that's done because, well, I'm a dork. So my husband's really smart and he just gave me some tips when it comes to you putting in the soup after you've cooked the meat. First thing, do not season your meat. Do not season your meat. It changes the flavor completely and it gets all weird. Um, unless you're weird and you like that weird stuff, go for it, I guess. I mean, but I wouldn't do it. Um, 
and with the soup it does take a while after you put the soup in for it to mix and do what it's supposed to and everything so with that being said i turned the meat back on it's only been a few minutes you guys i turned the meat back on and i'm going to mix in my soup and i'm only going to do about half that big can that you guys saw and go from there shouldn't need more no i'm not going to add water that's just strange and yeah i'll let you know how it works my rice is done my mix is starting to look good the soup's starting to break down a little bit so i'm going to stir it please bear with me you guys i'm sorry I'm going to stir it, obviously, because you guys see me do that. I'm going to add in my mushrooms. I'm going to still a couple while I still can. I'm going to mix this all in together. Probably should have used a bigger skillet. Okay, this is kind of really hard to do with one hand. Let this all cook down some more. And then the very last step is adding in your sour cream the very very last step so just cook down and then I'll show you putting in the sour cream because well you kind of notice that's what I do <laughs> I'm sorry it's taking me so long to make a video about me cooking dinner but hey it's whatever <laughs> So I switched pots. <laughs> um, there was just way too much stuff to fit into the skillet. It's burning off the air or the water right now. But so I switched pots because, well, it's smarter to not have to overflow. So it's looking pretty good. It's actually kind of too high of a heat. It's starting to burn. So I'm going to turn that down. So I'm going to turn it off because it's done. Okay. So it's done, you guys. There, it's done you guys. So what you do next is you take your shower cream and you just put some of it in there. You don't have to do very much. Um, you will notice when you put it in, the consistency changes and you mix it in real well. We do about half a container or one whole small container. Let me see if I can grab my stuff for it. Sorry you guys, I'm doing this all with one hand. I told you to bear with me. <laughs> Sour cream. Oh, don't fall. I want to say that will do a trick. That might have been too much. good oh i wish you guys were here tastes good i know it does i've been tasting it the whole entire time and it smells absolutely delicious you guys are missing out right now sorry y'all okay so you see this creamy texture now that's what you want it to be that's exactly how you want it to be So, my food is done. I'm really excited to eat it. Very excited to eat it. So, with it being done, and me being extremely hungry, I'm going to say bye and let you guys all go. So, 
I can go stuff my fat face. So I'm sure this is going to be a very, oh God, that was bad lighting. I'm sure it's going to be very, very, very long video and I'm sorry that it's so long just to make stroganoff. <laughs> I've never had to make stroganoff and do the camera by myself. So it's, and I like to talk to you guys if you didn't notice. So with all of that being said, I am going to go eat now and I'm going to get Richard off of his butt and have him come eat with me. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you had a fun little time with it and hopefully you guys do stroganoff like this and not out of a box or a packet because you guys this tastes so much better than all of that. See you guys next time. Bye.